Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Kihano. Thank you for joining us. North Korean state media says Kim Jong-un expressed, quote, great satisfaction Sunday over recent drills of its weapons system. Pyongyang released these photos of Kim overseeing test runs. They show what appear to be long-range multiple rocket launches, as well as a new short-range ballistic missile. It is not clear where or when these pictures were taken. However, it is known North Korea conducted drills off its east coast Friday. The regime fired several projectiles into the Sea of Japan. The actions were detected by South Korea. They immediately rang the alarm. The Trump administration says it's monitoring the situation closely. The drills will likely heighten tensions as the U.S. works for denuclearization in the region. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo addressed the issue on Face the Nation Sunday. The toughest sanctions in the history of North Korea remain in place. Uh, that's probably what's putting some of the pressure on Chairman Kim today. Uh, you saw this happen, too, right after his visit to Russia, right? Uh, right after he spoke with Vladimir Putin, he made the decision to take these actions. Uh, we're still evaluating uh, the appropriate response, uh, but I, I want everyone in your audience to know we're going to exhaust every diplomatic opportunity there is. I uh, continue to invite our counterparts for negotiations. We still believe there is a path forward where Chairman Kim can denuclearize uh, without uh, resort to anything beyond diplomacy. The North Korean missile launch was also a main topic on the rest of the Sunday morning shows. Here's some of which you may have missed. I don't see this as a victory that he launched these test missiles. I don't see that as a victory at all. And I also don't believe we should be conducting our foreign policy by tweet. It's a very, very hard thing to do, but you've got to quietly work and you've got to have summits that produce results where you don't just don't fly over, get no result and come home. Well, I want to keep talking with Kim Jong-un. Um, I, I think, you think I, the don't, president's I don't have any respect. No. Well, I don't know. I mean, he could be. I don't know. Uh, the only person who knows that is Kim Jong-un. We can all speculate. But I would much rather have us being uh, talking, have us talking with Kim Jong-un than firing missiles at each other. Now, at some point, we're going to get down to it. Uh, it's going to be, what are you going to give up and what are we going to give up? I assume the president's working on that. Molly Hooper joins me now. She's a CBSN political contributor. Molly, thanks so much for being here. How Absolutely. could these launches impact American efforts to negotiate North Korea's denuclearization? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. And what's more is, is how are members of Congress going to be weighing in on this? I mean, given that Keep in mind now that we're now that we're at this this state where North Korea is sort of ratcheting up it, it, its actions. Democrats are in the majority in the House, and so the question that I, that I'm going to be following is how the Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Elliot Engel pursues this um, in in his hearings, and I'm certain that we're going to be seeing that in front of the committee um, in the very near future. I know that there is a hearing in Foreign Affairs at some point over the next week or two on the threats. In in that air area in the pe in the Pacific region, so so we'll see. But but it's unclear. Well, on Saturday, the president tweeted, "Kim Jong Un fully realizes the great economic potential of North Korea, and he will do nothing to interfere or end it." Do we know what strategies the administration is weighing about the best way to move forward? Again, another great question and one that members of Congress want to know as well, because whatever strategies that the, the president wants to implement, he will need the backing and the consent of Congress. And at this point, there's a question mark as to what the president is thinking when it comes to, to, to North Korea. Keep in mind, several, you know, last year when the president started reaching out to, to the North Korean dictator, members of Congress on both sides were, were open-minded about it. And, um, but Democrats in particular who, who followed this closely when President Clinton was in the White House, when he was the president, and also tried to work with the North Koreans on coming up with some negotiations to reduce the nuclear arms, um, said, you know, there comes a point in these negotiations where the Kims do the reverse. And, you know, we haven't hit that point yet, but perhaps this, this recent launch is that point at which um, the Trump administration will have to weigh how to pursue, the, how, how to pursue their options. And also, given the fact that the defense secretary is an acting defense secretary, that adds another wrinkle into this whole um, strategy. You know, how, 
where is your where is your Pentagon in all these matters? Well, sticking with foreign policy, Molly, the U.S. and China are meeting this week <laughs> for what could be the last round of trade talks. What are the big disagreements still being negotiated? Well, I, I mean, you know, you have you have the human rights issues, and of course, of course, the tariffs of on on U.S. products and how many how much tariffs to put on the, the Chinese products, and this issue of fairness for farmers in the United States. It's it's a major major issue, and one that Democrats and Republicans, at least on the Ways and Means Committee, seem to have been you know coalescing behind Robert Lighthizer, and and they actually see the the you know, the benefit in the way that he's pursuing these talks. But again, it's unclear because keep in mind, one of the key issues that the United States has with China, um, in addition to uh, the tariffs, has to do with intellectual property. And and how that's going to factor into this final trade deal, well, that's going to be very complicated. And even though Secretary of State Pompeo says that the, that we, the United States still is imposing tough um, the tough sanctions on North Korea, a lot of that has to do with um, China's involvement and willingness to help impose those sanctions. And so that's why these trade talks are so important um, that, that we come to some deal, because without China's help in really cracking down on their bankers and whatnot, um, and if you have China miffed at you because you, they don't like the way that the United States is dealing with them on trade, well, those sanctions become less tough on North Korea. So, mm -hmm. again, this is this is a very important um, negotiating session that we're going to be seeing this next week. Uh, meanwhile, Molly, the president announced Sunday the new head of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. In a tweet, he called Mark Morgan, quote, a true believer and American patriot. What do we know about Morgan? Well, from my understanding, I mean, Morgan worked on, in the Obama administration. He was the head of customs and border control. Uh, he's also a former FBI official, and you know he spent his lo spent a lot of years in the FBI. And actually, I was going back over my notes to. Uh, to look, because keep in mind, when I cover Congress, you see these guys up in front of the, the committees all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was looking back at my notes on Morgan, and he he has been one for a strong, strong border control. Um, I mean, border patrol, definitely. Uh, building a wall has been something that he has supported in the past. There needs to, he believes in president. I don't know if he goes as far as President Trump, per se, but it's an issue that he has um, supported in the past before these congressional committees. So we'll just see how the um, Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee panel um, grills him, so to speak, when he comes before the panel. But keep in mind, the Senate's going to be busy. They have quite a few confirmations they need to get through, um, major confirmations. And, you know, it's, it's unclear how quickly they'll take this one up. But one would think that it needs to happen fairly soon, given all of the turmoil that's happening on the border and the, the administration's request for more funding to go down there. Uh, on another front, uh, Monday is the deadline for the Treasury Department to hand over six years of President Trump's taxes. Congressman Don Beyer, a Virginia Democrat who sits on the House Ways and Means Committee, was on Red and Blue last week, and I asked him about his committee's request. Let's listen to that. I think we have to pursue every possible congressional and legal avenue. Um, I read the long IRS commissioner's letter rejecting uh, Chairman Neal's request, and it, it, uh, it was the flimsiest thing I'd ever seen. The law, which dates back to 1923, is very clear that if the U.S. Congress asks for it, the IRS has a responsibility to turn it over. So, Molly, what kind of legal battle could this turn into? A long one, a very yeah. long one. <laughs> Protracted, yes. <laughs> Protracted. Congress needs to be spending more money on the courts these days, it seems like, given all of the, the separation of powers issues that are going to be playing out in the third branch of government over these next months and perhaps years. I mean, look at what happened with Eric Holder. That took and fast and furious when the Republicans were in power, and they they essentially held uh, Holder, or they voted to, to vote. They, they subpoenaed documents that he wouldn't turn over, and it turned into a huge court battle that, that lasted for four years, something like that. So mm -hmm. th this could be quite protracted, um, and Democrats will fight it. 
the president will fight it as well, and we'll and we'll see who 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 wins in the end. But as an Article One girl, uh, <laughs> they should turn over those documents and, and the tax returns. Well, the administration is facing another congressional deadline Monday. The Justice Department mm -hmm. has until 9 a.m. Monday to hand over an unredacted copy of the special counsel's report. If not, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler is threatening Attorney General William Barr with contempt. How realistic a possibility do you think that is at this point? Well, th there's been a little bit of a little bit of movement on well, sort of movement on this front. This is all sort of a big game of congressional and executive chicken, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, you know, the the Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee are threatening contempt because they want access to the unredacted version of the Mueller report, including the grand jury documents, volumes and volumes, and probably warehouses of documents. Um, the Justice Department saying no, but the Justice Department, again, has allowed, you know, eight individuals in, in Congress who have play key roles, Senate and Republican and House leaders, as well as the key committee chairman and ranking members, including Nadler, to go and look at the full report. Nadler said no. But what he's also said in this latest version of uh, negotiations with the Justice Department is that, OK, maybe maybe that full report would be released to more members of Congress, but not necessarily everyone. Now, whether the Justice Department agrees to that, that sort of negotiation, uh, it's unclear. I have a mm -hmm. feeling it probably won't go anywhere, because, you know, can, when somebody is being, when, when a member of the administration is being uh, held in, in contempt of Congress, not a lot happens. And in fact, I believe that it's a civil matter. It, it goes to civil court. So, so it's kind of like a slap on the wrist. However, it is a talking point, and it's the administration essentially forcing House Judiciary Democrats' hands, saying, you know, if you really want these documents, launch an impeachment inquiry, mm. because then they will get access to it. And Democrats are kind of going up to that line. They don't want to cross it. You know, consider that Speaker Pelosi is saying, we, are, we aren't going to defeat this president, um, you know, in the extremes. We have to play to the middle here. Mm -hmm. And impeachment is not in the middle. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see just how much both sides dig in. Molly Hooper exactly. in Washington. Molly, thank you. Thank you.